take a break when you're at your best, not when you're starting to feel at your worst. Because if you're starting to feel that progress or that drain or whatever, that's when you start taking a break, it's too late. It's too late. That's when you, when you, when you'll, you'll, you'll struggle to get back into it. So you have to take that break. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Flow Over Fear and Three Things. And today I want to talk about three of the lesser known ways in which you can get into flow. And we all know some of the you know elements of, of flow that are more widely known, like, like flow comes from focus, from discipline, from rising above our fears, for example, and from practicing our passion and finding greater meaning in our pursuits. But Sometimes these lesser known ways of practicing flow get overlooked. And a lot of times they be, if we don't practice them, we find that our way and our flow is obstructed. So I want to share just a few with you today and, and get into um, how to incorporate these in your life. Because I know that for me, a lot of times some of these, these, you know, knowing that, uh, that I needed to practice focus and discipline and things like that were important. But if I wasn't careful, I would oftentimes find myself in that world of willpower. You know how you can get into the world of willpower or the domain of discipline. The domain of discipline tends to happen when we are, you know, when we start to fully get into the zone, when we, when we have a purpose, when our purpose and our values and the meaning behind our dreams are aligned and we take meaningful and purposeful action and we create this plan that has purpose behind it. And then we hold ourselves, we, we have a strong structure of accountability that puts us into that domain of discipline. But a lot of times we fall into that world of willpower where we have that somewhat impulsive desire, right? Where we don't have a lot of meaning behind it. We, we, we don't necessarily, you know, it doesn't really meet our values, but it's something that we might lust after. And we know the difference between like a real desire that's impulsive and a desire that lights us up is lasting, sustainable meaning. And so if we take action on that impulsive desire, it puts us into this honeymoon phase where we start to kind of persist down that you know path for a little while while it's still comfortable, whilst, while we're still making progress. But we tend to burn out or get complacent when it starts to get harder or we receive fewer of the results. That kind of happens, right? Every time around this year in March, when our New Year's resolutions start to fall short, we set up these impulsive desires to to, uh, 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 to get fit or healthy. And we start a 12 week program and, and all of a sudden, you know, we fall short because we stop seeing the progress. And so it no longer fits our, our criteria for meaning at that point. So we, we, we know about getting into that domain of discipline. We know that, that continuing to do that on a, on a consistent basis helps us to rise above fear, but there are other ways in which, you know, we should be incorporating so that we don't lose that meaning that we have and that we don't burn out and that we don't get complacent. And the first way I want to talk about is, is something I've mentioned before on earlier episodes, which is taking a break while you're at your best. Throughout the course of the day, when, when you're trying to get into flow or when you're working on projects, a lot of times you'll find yourself getting into that flow state. And a lot of times, if you're not really focused on, on getting into flow and how that process works, uh, a lot of times you might get into the flow by accident. Have you ever had that where you just find that you start working and you get into the zone and everything is just on all cylinders? You might be listening to the right kind of music. You might just be in the right kind of mindset. You might be well rested and you just get into that zone. And how long does that zone, being in that zone last? Well, traditionally, if you're like me or if you're like anybody else, it, it, it tends to last maybe a couple hours. Then when you fall out of that zone, 
you fall in pretty dramatic fashion. You just kind of stop doing what you're doing. And then you find that later on, it's harder to get back into that flow if you need to, um, whether it be later in the day or whether it be the next day, you just, you just lose that momentum. And so the result is, is that we want to keep going. We don't want to lose out on where we were at because we lose our place. We might not be able to get it back later. And so we want to keep it going. Um, I mean, imagine yourself writing a book and you just get into this flow of just writing this story and, and you're like, I know I got to stop now. I'm super tired, but I don't want to lose this place where I'm at. Well, in reality, what happens is you rise up and you, and, and you start to get into that flow state and you start to plateau on your, on your progress and you continue to operate at that high level, that high performance level until there's a sudden drop off of performance. And when you have that sudden drop off in performance, you get that frustration, that writer's block or that, that uh, energy zap or whatever it may be. And it gets really hard to get it back. So then that, so, so that's the nature of taking a break while you're at your best. You want to, you want to recognize when you are performing at your peak and that you're in the flow and say, Hey, I'm in the flow. And then set a timing uh, of, of that so that you can, so that you can take a break before that sudden drop off happens. You know, maybe an hour into being in the flow, just put a pin in what you're doing and have the discipline to say, I'm going to find my place back here. Take a break, go outside, change your environment. That's an important piece. Change your environment, get outside, get some vitamin D, uh, do a little bit of exercise, just 15 or 20 minutes. It does it, it doesn't matter, but just get outside and, and give your brain a break for a moment. You'll be able to come back to it and then get right back into it. You'll have a little bit of a dip in productivity when you start back up as you try and find your, your gear, but then you'll get right back into it and you'll start to, you'll start to see that progress happen again. And you'll start to get back into flow, repeat that. And you'll see the upward trajectory continue to grow throughout there. That's a very, very powerful way to incorporate greater flow into your life is to take those little mini breaks, is to take a break when you're at your best, not when you're starting to feel at your worst. Because if you're starting to feel that progress or that drain or whatever, if that's when you start taking a break, it's too late. It's too late. That's when, you, when, you, when you'll, you'll, you'll struggle to get back into it. So you have to take that break when you're at your best. The second lesser known way to practice greater flow is to move your body. Yes, move your body. If you can change your physiology, you can change your mind. And this is an important concept is when we start to work in front of the computer, you notice that, 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 that your posture changes, your back is bent, you know, you're looking down and it's hard to get into that, that zone when your body is like that, when your physiology is like that. But if you can just simply jump up, turn on the right side right type of music for your mind, which might be empowering music. It's not bread. You don't want to, you don't want to listen to bread, um, you know, because that's not very empowering music. Um, I like bread though. This, don't get me wrong, but it's just not the type of like super productivity music, but you want to listen to something uplifting and then you want to move your body, whether it be dancing, whether it be jumping on a trampoline, whether it be going outside and going on a quick run or something like that. If you move your body, you move your mind, your mind starts to move, your mind starts to change, you start to reframe your mind, you start to give yourself energy. And that's a way to get yourself into that flow. So if you can, if you can simply move your body, that's a great way to do it. And over time, if you, if you practice aerobic exercise, which is that lower intensity, you know, running, cycling, that sort of thing, you can actually over time, and over a longer period of time, condition your brain to be more productive and more energetic and produce more energy. And you'll find yourself becoming more productive if you're incorporating more aerobic exercise into your routine. Yes, strength training. Yes, uh, speed work. Yes, that stuff is all great, all important. But if you do too much of that, you burn out. You send yourself deeper down into that spiral. So you want to you want to incorporate more easy exercise, going out for walks, doing, you know, rebounding on a trampoline. Those kinds of things really, really work very well to get your mind moving. There's a couple of ways to move around uh, for flow in the moment. If you want to kind of jumpstart your brain, 
it's those little five, 10 or 15 minute exercises like rebounding on the trampoline, like getting up and dancing in front of a mirror, um, uh, which I definitely don't do by the way. And, uh, or, uh, or just, you know, doing some push ups, doing some sit ups, doing something like that. Those things can empower you to, you know, wake up your mind. And in the longer term, that aerobic exercise on a daily basis where you do 30, 40, you know, up to an hour of, of exercise and work your way up to it, uh, at an easy aerobic pace, you will start to generate more energy, more, uh, more flow in your life. And then finally, finally, and I, I mentioned this in the previous one, when I was talking about, you know, taking a break and getting out, getting outside, it's changing your environment. You know, a lot of times you get cooped up in your office, you get cooped up in a, in a certain place and, and you learn to kind of be complacent in that environment. Um, you know, it, and a lot of us, I love my office. I love this, you know, studio. I love the areas where I work, but it helps through a creative process to get into flow, to change that environment, go, go, go into the world. Go sit in a park, go to your favorite coffee shop, do something that will bring you out of the environment where you traditionally work and uh, you traditionally encounter problems and you, and, and, and just create a new environment and, and find that new environment and, and find how it fills you up. That's one of the great ways of, of encountering greater flow is if you can, if you can bring yourself into an environment that helps you do that. You know, for me, I really enjoy nature. And so when I find myself in the mountains running, or if I'm just camping or things like that, and I bring a notebook, the creativity flows so much better for me. You can identify that within yourself by trial and error of finding those environments that work best for you and your creative energy and your, your mental energy and your well-being your mental well-being. Uh, so that's, that's the advice to, uh, of, of three lesser known ways to get into greater flow is to take breaks when you're at your best, to move your body in certain ways to, to invigorate that energy and to wake up your mind and to change your environment in which you're working so that you can bring greater flow to your life. And if you practice these things along with Everything else we talk about related to getting clarity on your dream and bringing meaning and values and everything behind that and, and practicing the discipline and getting into the domain of discipline, you will find yourself in that flow state far more often. And you'll find yourself making tremendous progress and you'll find yourself instead of experience and languishing in fear, you'll find yourself dancing with fear and embracing it and learning to use it to your advantage, use it for your own growth. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Flow Over Fear podcast. If you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com called The Foundations of Flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us.